Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Mind the Moments Thursday morning gathering brought to you by Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare and Tufts Health Plan. And this is a place where we invite experienced mindfulness instructors to speak with us about what mindfulness means to them and to discuss as a community how we can incorporate these practices into our daily lives. I'm Suzanne Rowe Palacino, and always delighted to be here on Thursdays with Tara Healy, founder and director of Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare's mindfulness program. Good morning, Tara. Good morning, Suzanne. Nice to see folks joining. Good morning, everyone. Well, um, yeah, it's great to see everyone joining. And for anyone that's new this morning, a special welcome. Anybody that's joined us that hasn't joined us before, and a special welcome to our regulars. As always, we have a lovely community here and so happy to see the um, names of the regular folks that join. Uh, so for those that haven't been here before, what we do is Tara starts, um, starts us off with a question for the group, and then um, she'll share a few words with us, um, lead us in a 12 minute guided practice, at least 12 minutes. Uh, sometimes we go a little bit longer and she'll, guide us through the practice, as well as um, allow some silent time for us to practice in that mode, um, because it's good for us to look to uh, experience both uh, ways of meditating. And then after that, we'll have an opportunity for questions and um, chatting. So if you go to the bottom of your screen and open up the chat, and you can just click on the blue drop down menu that says Hosts and panelists, you can change it to everyone and then everyone can see your comments as you type them in. So with that, Tara, what is your question for the group this morning? Yes. Uh, so my question is actually, it's um, this question came out of a couple things, just thinking about uh, so much of what's happening in the world and there's a, that there's a heaviness <clears throat> and wanting to, you know, kind of bring in some of the good things that are going on in the world. And I also just recently saw Dan Harris's most recent TED talk, and it's fantastic. So it's on loving kindness, really. And his kind of journey, it's very short. It's literally, I think, 13 minutes, something like that. But he really packs a lot in there and talks about loving kindness. And the capacity to offer that to himself, to someone who's easy to love, uh, to a person who's more neutral, and to somebody who's who's challenging or difficult for you. But I started thinking about um, positive people in my life. And so the question is, what is one of your favorite things about someone in your family? And Think of family as an umbrella term that is really broad. <laughs> so it could be your immediate family, extended family, family of friends, family of colleagues. It's really a broad term. Um, but when Dan in his TED talk uh, was talking about loving kindness and going through the different people that you bring to mind, the one that is staying with me and related to this question is, who is someone in your life that is really easy for you that makes you smile when you think of them and what is one of your favorite things about that person so a quality an attribute a characteristic that is uh, a favorite for you and as always we will um start with suzanne and uh will so what is what is one of your favorite things about someone in your family broad term yeah, so I think of my daughter um, and she is just a really positive um, force in the house. Um, she is just, she always looks at things from the bright side. She's always smiling. Um, she's always got music on. Um, she just has just a happy personality. So that's the person I think about. Um, at first so nice yeah how about you tara yeah so a person i think of that really makes me smile often is my sister and i you know um part of it is that she's got she's very funny and um humor is a quality that i've been drawn to since i was little i would always know in who in the class was the class clown and quietly snicker in the back of the room 
And so I really appreciate um, my sister's sense of humor. And yeah, so she is she is who I would select. But let's see, what do we have? Yeah. Uh, oh, brother, accepting. Yeah. Son's ability to develop and maintain friendship. Random acts of kindness. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, dedicated to others. Son. Uh, yeah. My daughter also, huh. grandchildren. Yeah, I love yeah, this. I love that. Giving me I... a pumpkin or other gesture. <laughs> yeah, dedicated it's... to other people's well being. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, that, I mean, it's truly, you, it, it, Michael's brought up someone that just a, a general type of person that, that yeah. just brings, um, happiness to him. So that's great. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I love that. We're that. Children. It's so important. My son level-headed and willing to give you both sides of the coin. Yeah. yeah. Maternal grandmother of my Nana. I had a Nana too. Warm, yeah, I love this. I mean, and these are all qualities of mind that can be trained in this practice. And I think a lot of the neuroscience uh, and the neuroscientists point to, and Dan talks about this too, um, as these are skills that can be trained. Uh, because, uh, you know, Dr. Richard Davidson, who's a neuroscientist at the University of Wisconsin, I love his quote that whatever we incline our mind towards on a regular basis, we actually train that habit pattern. That's the habit pattern we train. And I think um, mindfulness prevents us from going into like denial over something, but really, you know, because it's a capacity to see clearly. So it's not about looking at the world with rose colored glasses and really acknowledging that there is real pain and there is real suffering. And it's also pos possible to train some of these kind of pro-social skillful qualities of mind um, through these practices. And so that's, um, that's what we'll do. And we'll end with a loving kindness practice and including ourselves and also including somebody who is easy for us to like or love, just easy for us, you know, uncomplicated. Um, and it's uh, a great way to start. So I'm glad you're all here and yeah. uh, really looking forward to um, practicing and then uh, connecting after. So Sounds this will good. be about 12 minutes. Um, we've been following Dr. Amishi Jha's uh, suggestion on her research that this is kind of the sweet spot for starting to make a difference. Um, all right, so settle in to a posture that feels like it's going to work for you today. Um, that could be sitting or standing. You might take a little bit of a bodily stretch uh, just to uh, help the body adjust to the posture. Eyes open or closed. If you decide to keep the eyes open, it's helpful to gaze downward a little bit to help remove peripheral distraction. And on your own, take two deep breaths, deep inhalation through the nose, and make that exhalation a little bit longer. So go ahead and do two deep breaths. On that final exhalation, really surrendering your weight into the support of the surface that you're on, making any micro movements in the body so that your posture is upright and engaged uh, with a spine that is straight but not stiff. So softening the body around the spine that's holding you upright. And noticing any sound in the room or outside of the room. And allowing sound to remain as it will. And aware of any bodily sensations or what bodily sensations are making themselves known from your activity so far this morning. You know, pulsing, vibration, temperature. 
And of course, the points of contact with the back of the body and the surface, whether that's the soles of the feet or all, all along the back of the body. Just receiving the sensations. They may be pleasant, they may be unpleasant, they may be more neutral, neither. However, they're showing up, bringing in an attitude of receptivity, an allowance to what has arise, what has arisen in the body, whatever sensation. And let's begin now to find an anchor for the wandering mind. So you have some options here. You know, as you breathe in and breathe out, and however you're breathing is fine. You don't have to make it different or special. But as you breathe in and breathe out, where in the body is the sensation of the in-breath and the out-breath strongest? Could be the belly, kind of abdomen area, the chest, the nostrils, or someplace else. But you're tapping into the physical sensation of that breath. So as you breathe in and out, tracking with your attention. And then each time you see that a thought has slipped in unnoticed and you notice it, just soft mental note thinking, soften the body and return to tracking the breath sensation, wherever in the body you notice it. Alternatively, you could take the palms of your hands and rest them on your thighs and let that point of contact, the actual feeling or sensation be your anchor or another body sensation and sound is also a possibility. So you can explore a little bit, see what's gonna work for you this morning. And selecting your anchor, allowing that to be the anchor you work with for the remainder of the practice. So remembering that thoughts slip in unnoticed. And then there's a moment where you notice. You can just make a soft mental note, thinking, not a problem. Soften the body and return to the anchor you're using this morning over and over again.
Noticing where the mind is. Soft mental note thinking and returning to your anchor. <clears throat> And as I mentioned, we'll end with a loving kindness practice. And I am going to ask you to call to mind that person you may have thought of this morning or could be someone else, but someone that is really easy for you to love or to like. It's uncomplicated. Uh, generally brings a smile when you think of this person. <clears throat> and just bring that person to your mind's eye. Just kind of call them forth. And feel, you know, even physically, you know, how, how does it feel physically in the body when you are calling forth this person where it's really uncomplicated, it's easy with them. 
This could also be a pet. So you could think about a pet, um, pet that has passed or is living. And as we have this person in our mind's eye or this, this pet, this being, um, you can repeat these phrases in your mind. Um, may you be peaceful and at ease. May you be peaceful and at ease. May your heart be soft and open. May your heart be soft and open. May you be safe and protected. May you be safe and protected. And may your body be healthy and strong. May your body be healthy and strong. And so just feel the impact of that physically in your body, wishing well to this person or being. You know, offering warmth and kindness and safety and happiness. And let's go ahead and move to ourselves. And if we are finding ourselves hard to offer this to, you could again think of a, another person or a pet. But may I be peaceful and at ease. May I be peaceful and at ease. May my heart be soft and open. May my heart be soft and open. May I be safe and protected. May I be safe and protected. And may my body be healthy and strong. May my body be healthy and strong. And may our practice today be for the benefit of all beings. And I'll come backward from three, two, and one. If your eyes were closed, you can go ahead and open the eyes. And whether they were open or closed, it's always helpful to just kind of reorient to the space you're in, do a little bit of a stretch, kind of look around, reconnect. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Tara. Yes, of course. Yeah. And I just want to welcome any thoughts, observations, comments, um, questions, from the group. And uh, again, I would just highlight Dan Harris's recent TED Talk as just a really kind of, uh, because he's such a skeptic of especially something called loving kindness practice, it's really good. It's it's worth it, worthwhile. Yeah. So um, when you were mentioning about his um, TED Talk, I had seen, I haven't listened to it, but I had seen it and I love the title of it because it's just so Dan Harris. It's the benefits of not being a jerk to yourself. Yes. You know, yes. it's he's yes. always got like a sarcastic way yeah. of presenting these things and it yes. makes it really approachable. I've got the um the link here. I'll share it with everyone. Oh, oh good. That's yeah. great. Oh, and the loving kindness statements. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let me, let me type those in and, and know that you can make up your own too. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I thought was really um, great about how you presented this Tara and how many times it's presented is um, starting with a person that's easy to uh, really easy to offer loving kindness to. So you get yeah. yourself in the mode of, yes. Um, Cause you know, I know Dan has always kind of described these, these uh, feelings as kind of, you know, they can sound kind of sicky sweet or, yeah, kind yeah. Of, um, you know, artificial at first, but when you offer them to someone else, they don't sound artificial. Right. You right. Know? And yeah. I think it's really, it can be really good to think of when you're offering them to yourself, you can almost, if it's hard to do that, like what you mentioned, you could even yeah. picture 
that easy person offering them to you. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yes. So that yes. It's just sometimes it's hard for us to offer them to ourselves, but you can picture someone like right next to you offering them along with you, you know? Right. right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I wanted to extend it to include other beings, you know, that, um, yeah. But any, you know, any other kind of thoughts or observations or comments or even, you know, um, did you, what did you notice in your body when you call forth a person that's easy for you? You know, is there anything you noticed uh, physically in the heart or the mind? And, you know, these are, these are all really good things to kind of tap into. Um, wow, I see we're at 8.59 too, but my hands got warmer. Yeah, my hands got warmer. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Then, yeah. Instantaneous yeah. smile. It is, you know, when we call forth someone that's easy for us, it is kind of interesting, I think, to something physically happens. And even a smile that you're not trying to bring on just, uh, yeah, I find that with my sister often, I just have to call forth the image. And yeah, yeah, and um, someone's mentioned here, it's challenging meditation for them, anyone else. This is not, if it's the first time, uh, I'm really glad you shared this, is yeah. it can be really challenging the first time. Yeah. It's something that you just, you need to kind of titrate here and there because yeah. I, um, it was, it, it didn't register for me at first. So I'm glad you shared that. Yeah, and I also wonder too, um, in the question, uh, was it the silence, was it the loving kindness piece or was it the silence and the longer periods of silence? So I'm not, you know, cause from the comment, we don't know, is it the loving True. kindness part or is it the, is it just, is it the other part where there are gaps in, in, you know? Yeah. And if others need to drop off, thank you for joining. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, a great question, yeah, Tara. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's Unbound Visual Arts is your username. So if, you, if you're still on, go ahead and type in and let us know if there was something um, in particular. Let's see. They're still on. And, yeah. and also, you know, what I would say, too, is the noticing of the difficulty in itself is great. <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. the, the awareness of that difficulty. And then um, you can actually come into the body with that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yes, the, yeah. And yes, this practice can revert. This is the idea that we formally practice, not so that we're, you know, kind and open uh, just when we're practicing. We're doing it so that we can apply you know, this kind of warmth of heart and kindness out into the world. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just going to leave you with one of my favorite quotes by the Dalai Lama, be kind whenever possible. It's always possible yeah. and be kinder than is necessary. And yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah, thank you so, so much. It's great to everybody. have you here, Tara. Yeah. And thank you for um, revisiting this um, meditation. Um, and I think the question really got everybody um, yeah. engaged in the beginning and, and revisiting loving kindness is, is always good, especially yeah. during challenging times. So right. And it's a practice, really it's a practice to remember it's a skill, like it's a skill that can be trained. So, yeah. 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 So it's good really to be helpful. with everybody. Yeah. So nice to have you here and, uh, yeah, we'll be here next week, three days as well. So hopefully you can join us again. So enjoy the balance of your week. And yes, we will see you soon. Be okay. well. Bye, everybody.